Hi, I'm Sarah Bell. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can do realistic shading using Adobe Illustrator. This is one of my several videos that I call useful illustrator tricks for cartographers videos. Sometimes I call them maps in illustrator, but as I say in all of these videos, these illustrator methods are used by all sorts of designers, not just map makers. I happen to be a map maker, so I focus on how to do these methods with maps. I use illustrator for a lot of my cartography work. Even if the map element is going to end up in something like After Effects or in a JavaScript application, I am still probably incorporating Illustrator in there somewhere. This video in particular focuses on how you can do light rendering. So making your graphic design look like it has a third dimension rather than being flat. I do this frequently, sometimes very subtly and other times I turn it up a bit. The object that this video focuses on is a sphere. In cartography, a lot of times maps will have inset maps of the planet that indicates where on the planet the map occurs. Here are two snippet examples of that. I'm not showing the full maps here. Notice the globe inset on the left uses a little more subtle rendering than the one on the right, but I accomplished both of these globes using the same exact method. There is a basic anatomy for making circles appear as spheres. This anatomy consists of the point highlight which is where the main light source shines. There's the mid-tone, which represents the true tone of the object. There's the core shadow, which is the dark side of the sphere, or it's where on the sphere the least light is hitting. Then there's the reflective highlight, which is the part of the sphere that's on the dark side, but there's ambient light that bounces off this furthest part of the dark side. And the cast shadow is the shadow casted by the object, so in this case the sphere, onto other objects. So let's take a look at how we can do light rendering in Adobe Illustrator. Here we are in Adobe Illustrator. We are looking at the final globe after the 3D effects have been made. So let me turn off the layer that has. So I am working on a PC today, and so I'm gonna be using PC shortcuts. And as I use them, I'm going to call them out. Control space bar, I have the view if I had GPU on, if I had control space bar, it gives me this magnifying glass and it just will continuously zoom in. It's kind of cool. If I go control zero, I get back to full screen. If I put the view on preview on CPU, I can draw a box with control space bar giving me the magnifying glass and draw the box around where I want to go and it zooms in. So that's what I'm going to do for this demo. So after I turned off all of that 3D-ness, we have this flat looking, I know the earth isn't flat, but there is no 3D rendering on this globe. We're going to add some. Let's start with the mid-tone. We highlight the ocean. It's this circle layer in the background. What this circle is doing is two things for my map right now. It is giving the earth some roundness, but it's also representing the oceans, so it's blue. And so it's going to accomplish a lot of the mid-tone for this map, but I also like to use the gradient to tool in Adobe Illustrator to accomplish a mid-tone. So to do this, um, I'll, let me just say the rest of the rules that I'm going to be showing for a sphere in this demo rely on the fact that shadows are always defined by the shape and size of the object that you're applying the shadows to. So I'm going to be duplicating this ocean a lot. Great, uh, to do the gradient, I'm going to make a duplicate of this ocean. It's a duplicate a layer in Illustrator. In the layers panel, you can highlight it and go to this hamburger menu and select duplicate, ocean in this case. I will drag this ocean layer above my map data layer so we won't see them for a little while. And so now I have this blue circle on top of everything. And now I need to add a gradient to this circle. To do that, I go to the gradient panel. Any panel in Illustrator, sometimes I'll refer to them as windows, is found in the windows menu up here. And I have the gradient open, but here is the gradient if I wanted to select that one. It's right here. And to apply the gradient to this ocean in the gradients panel, I could choose from three different types. There's the linear gradient, which is exactly what it sounds like. The gradient follows a straight line. There's the radial gradient, where the gradient radiates from the center of the object. And then there's the freeform gradient, which I'm not going to get into today. I will select the radial gradient, and there we go. We have a gradient on my sphere, and that's wonderful. It's grayscale, and the light source is right in the center of the sphere. I want to edit these properties a little bit. So to do that, I'm first going to go to the gradient tool in the toolbar. 
like that. And now I can draw a line where I want the light source to start and where I want the direction of the light source to go. So to do that, I'm just gonna draw that line right here. And it takes a little while to get used to that tool, um, but it can be very useful, as you can see. So there, now my globe is shining pretty much where I want it to go. Um, and I like my gradient, but I also need to edit the colors because the default is grayscale. To edit the colors in your gradient, go back to the gradient panel and you get this slider. I can move this up here if I want, um, do all sorts of things, but I'm just going to edit the colors right now. It starts with a bright white and it goes to all the way to black. If I double click on this color, this little circle, it gives me a color picker and it defaults to the grayscale colors. For me, it's really easy to visualize picking colors by using the HSB color space. So I'm going to do that. I'm gonna drag this down to a pale yellow, the hue, and then drag the saturation up a little. And then I like the brightness because I do want it to be pale yellow. There we go. Now we're going from pale yellow to black. I'm going to edit the black end of the color spectrum. Bring that to HSB. And I can also, you see, here's my core shadow now. It's an insinuation of a core shadow based on this gradient tool. I'm gonna bring that in a little. Great, um, I could also even add colors to this gradient if I wanted to. So if I just click there and maybe I want it to be, I want this to be a little warmer. So let's say I'm happy with its gradient right now, but it is covering my map data layers. I'm going to fix that by applying a blend mode. Blend modes are pretty fantastic things in Illustrator. They all occur in the transparency panel. Here it is right here. And right now it's just normal. I'm going to choose the multiply blend mode. And what that does is it multiplies that top layer with all the layers beneath. And it always results in a little bit of a darker color, which I kind of like, but maybe if it's a little too dark, I can bring down the opacity of that gradient I just made. This might be enough for your purposes, but we're going to actually add vectors of our core shadows, our reflected highlight, and our point highlight, as well as our cast shadows. So again, to create that core shadow, I'm going to duplicate the ocean again because I want it to be based upon the same exact size and shape of the object that I'm applying shadows to. So I highlight that ocean, duplicate it, and then I'm going to bring that ocean Above the, okay, so for right now, I forgot to do this. I'm renaming that gradient circle to midtone to keep it separate from the other shapes. So here I have this ocean and it's just for good practice, let's call it core shadow. So now I have this blue circle sitting on top of everything and it's going to be a shadow. So let's make it darker like a shadow would be. And I'm going to copy this dark shadow and paste it directly in front of itself. So to copy it, I just am going to go control C and then control F will paste that circle directly in front of itself. So if I go over here, there it is. You can see there's two. I'm going to undo. So that was a control Z and I'm going to make this top one bright yellow so you can see the difference between the two. So they don't, here we go. I'm going to drag this yellow circle I want so that just the crescent shape of this darker circle remaining. So here's how I do that. I'm going to select both of these shapes and go to the Pathfinder panel. And the Pathfinder panel has all these wonderful shape modes and pathfinders. I am going to use the minus front, which subtracts the top shapes from the bottom shapes. So when I click that, I'm left with just that dark crescent shape here. If I turn off the midtone, you can see that pretty well. It's pretty harsh. It's covering up a lot of the map, but it is the shape that I want. So let's make it look like it's a core shadow and not this thing separate from and sitting on top of the map. So I'll select that core shadow and go to the effect drop down menu and select blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm gonna blur it up a little. Really this, this blur is depending on your map colors, your globe size, whatever you choose here. So you might need to play with it a little till you find exactly what works for your map. I think I'm pretty happy with that blur. So there it is, but it's still covering up my map and it still kind of looks like something that's floating on top of my map. I want this to visually become part of that map. To do that, I'm going to go back to the transparency panel and choose a blend mode called hard light. And now it's, it's pretty dark. Um, but it does look like it's a shadow that belongs to this globe. I'm going to bring down the opacity just a little. Yeah, 
I'm very happy with that. So I have this top core shadow here to save time. I just am going to select it so you can see it highlighted. I created this top core shadow the same exact way that I created this bottom core shadow. So let's move on to the reflected highlight. Again, it's going to be based upon the entire globe. So I'm going to duplicate this ocean again and bring this reflected path above the core shadow layer. Let's, re let's name this path that we just did. The reflected highlight is also based off this ocean. So I'm going to do a control C to copy it, control F to paste it in front. I'll make this a different color again. Let's, I don't know, why not magenta? All right, so you can see it's behind this top core shadow, but that's fine. I'm going to drag this around here because it's kind of going to mimic this top core shadow. So I have these two circles, this magenta one and this blue one that is sitting beneath it. And I'm going to use that minus front shape mode from the Pathfinder tool again. And now I have my reflected highlight. Pretty happy with that, but I want to make it white. And now I will add some blur. I'm happy with that blur, but it's very bright, so I'm going to bring the opacity down a bit. There, pretty happy with that. Now we're going to do the point highlight. How you do that is you go to the toolbar, and if you have it on the rectangle tool, if you hold your mouse, you can get to the ellipse tool, and then you just draw an ellipse. One little neat keyboard uh, tool is you might have seen how I did this as a perfect sphere. That's pretty hard to do if you just, oops, um, if you just do it like free form. That's kind of hard. How you do it, as I do this so much, I have to actually look at my fingers to see what I'm doing. I hold Alt and Shift, and Shift will, is what keeps it as a perfect circle. Alt is what helps you draw it from the center. So that, for me, helps me put my circle exactly where I want it and give it some blurriness. And now I will bring the opacity down a little bit. One last thing, the cast shadow. So again, it is based off of that ocean. So I'll duplicate the ocean, bring it down here. This cast shadow is the original one. So here I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to select it right here. So you might notice when I select objects, I'm selecting this blank area right here. That is just merely selecting the art, which is what I usually want to do. If you select this icon right here, which is called the target icon, you could potentially be defining the visual rules for that layer or piece of artwork. And if you do that without intending to, it can get pretty problematic. It can be very useful, but it's best to do only when you are intending. So I select my artwork by clicking right here in the selected area. And I have this blue circle in the background selected. You can see right here, cast shadows, they they kind of flow along another object. So th this circle needs to be a little bigger than the ocean or the, the globe itself. So to do that, I'm just going to click right here. I hold shift. It retains its proportions. And it's a blue shadow at this point. Let's make it a dark gray shadow. Cool. That's very dark. I'm going to give it some blur. And once again, I'll bring the opacity down a little bit. And I will apply the multiply blend mode. I'm also going to turn off these, these brighter layers in the back. There you go. Now we have rendered a 3D looking globe in Adobe Illustrator. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I post announcements for these videos on Twitter and Instagram at Sarah Bell Maps.